Okay. Now let us continue from where we stopped. So they were searching for water and the, and the pasture. They were searching for water and the pasture because they were nomads. So they were looking for water and the pasture. Population pressure or population increase also led to their migration. Internal conflicts among them say slaves over land, over leadership, also forced them to migrate. Migrate. External conflicts also with their neighbors, like the Gala from Ethiopia, also forced them to migrate. To migrate. Unfavorable climate. Unfavorable climate in the form of prolonged drought, in the form of floods, especially along River Nile. Eh? It also forced them to migrate to go to Kiria areas, to go to uh, better areas with better climate, hence their migration. Another one is that some wanted to export their ideas. They wanted to export their ideas. For example, their ideas of animal rearing. They wanted to export such kind of ideas, hence making them to move to other areas. Another one, some youth also migrated. The youth also migrated because they wanted to be free from the orders of their elders. Like the way many of you want to leave home and eloped, eh? because you don't yeah. want your mother to tell you that don't do this, don't put on the internet, don't put on the TV, you always want to put on soaps. Eh? So you find that you don't want such what? Such kind of orders, and then you want to, to leave home and go elsewhere. So even these people, the youth especially, migrated because of that. Bandwagon effect, as you hear the word, bandwagon effect. They saw others moving and they followed without a reason. They just followed like that far. That's what we call bandwagon effect. Love for adventure. Some rule, especially the youth, they wanted to know what was happening in other areas, what was beyond their Kurado land. Hence their migration. Then natural calamities like drought, prolonged drought, like famine, also forced the Luo to migrate to go in other areas that were safe. To go to other areas that were what? That were safe. Another one that the misfortunes, epidemics, such as sleeping sickness. Diseases like Nagana that attacked their animals forced them to migrate. To migrate. Right. Another one is that many of these Luo were nomads. Of course, some of them were agriculturists, they were farmers, but many of them were nomads. And remember, a nomad is that person who moves from one place to another, especially rearing their animals, looking for water and pasture. We normally call them nomads. They are unsettled. You know, in the class, even uh, when you come to school, there are such students who are always in the short co. They are called nomads. They can't settle every time. Teacher, please, teacher, may I go out? Please, teacher, may I go out? Every time they come to class, they want to go out. The short co. They are called nomads. Okay? Uh, who is that one putting for us the television? <laughs> Yeah? Oh my Can you mute your? I think that is Shiba. Mute your things, Shiba and your friend. So from there, we have seen the causes, and we have said that these causes you can use nice and lovely as a, a rhyme or an acronym that can make you remember. We have said that if we can make a summary. Of these factors, population increase, overstocking, diseases, uh, internal conflict, uh, love for adventure, the youth wanted to be independent, uh, increased pressure on land, uh, they were nomads, 
who wanted to move from place to place, uh, external conflicts, outbreak of famine, influence from their leaders, such as Orum. Uh, Orum influenced them, many followed him because he was the leader of the clan, looking for water and pasture, prolonged the drought, bandwagon effect, uh, unfavorable climate, uh, flooding, um, among others, and the bandwagon effect among others. Now let's go to this part, the one we call course. How did they move? How did they move? And that's the reason that I drew a sketch map of, of Uganda and some part of East Africa. But we normally encourage you that you complete that sketch map of East Africa. When you draw no Uganda, that is not East Africa. So this is not a geography. Don't use a lot of art. Just dress sketch. A sketch. Eh? Just dress sketch. As you can see there. Eh? A sketch map of East Africa. It has three marks. So don't say that uh, I'm wasting time. I'm not wasting time. Eh? Yes. So mm. when you look at the course of their migration, I'm going to first narrate. I'm going to first narrate a story of their course. Then after we shall follow what is there. So the Luo, who are also known as the River Lake Nidotis, they are also known as the Jonam. The Jonam. Okay. They include the tribes like the Langi, the Kumam, the Alul, the Japadola, the Kenyan Jaluo, among others. Yes. Where is your question? I mean, Jonam also a tribe. Is another name to mean the Luo? It is another name to mean the Luo. If you say the Jonam, they are the Luo. They are the Luo. Okay. So this so-called Luo, they can also set a question saying that who are the Jonam? Who are the Jonam? It means that they want you to first say that the Jonam we are also known as the Lu. The Luo. It is another name to mean the Luo. So, originally, the Luo came from Ethiopia. Originally, the Luo came from Ethiopia. That is in the Ethiopian Haira. Haira and Z. And then from there, they started moving in around the 13th century. They started moving southwards. When they moved southwards, they first settled around Lake Rudolf, around Lake, Lake Rudolf. Lake Rudolf is also known as, is also known as Lake Truka, Lake Trukana. Yeah. They first settled there in around the 13th century, century in the northern part of K, in the northern part of Kenya, isn't it? Yeah. It is from here or there uh, that they later moved to a place called Bahel Gazelle, which is found in southern what? Sudan. Okay. Spelling of Bahel is like this: Ba, then dash L dash Gazelle. Are you seeing that spelling? Ba El Gazelle, which is found in, in the equatorial province, and that is the southern Sudan, Sudan. We call this the equatorial, equatorial provi, province, and the country here, it is South, South Sudan. It used to be Sudan, not until in 2011, when they voted for a cessation to separate from the, the main Sudan of Khartoum, and they were given independence. So we are saying that after telling us that simple background, we say that 
their movement is believed to have started in around the 13th century to the 18th hundred that their movement from from ethiopia is believed to have started from the 13th century to 1800 it is when they they managed to fully settle in east africa from there we can say that their movement was slow and gradual their movement was slow and gra gradual they did enter east africa once that may be one week they were all over the different parts of east africa no we say that their movement was slow and gra grad they could move to a certain area and stay there for some years they rare they do their business they settle they produce and after some time they continue their journey so it was slow and gradual it was not a swift journey that immediately too, they came entered settled and what another one we are saying that their movement was seasonal their movement was seasonal meaning that they could do uh, move usually during the dry season season to look or to search for water and pasture they could settle during the wet season and be there they do their things they rear the animals they enjoy but when uh, they faced a challenge of flooding they faced a challenge of drought ha uh ha -huh, shiba please try to mute your your microphone so from there from there we are saying that they moved in small families all kiranis they moved in small families families all kiranis they moved in small families all kiranis meaning that some families would move and leave another there like that families would separate we are going to see how labongo uh, and gipil and tiful decided to go and depart to different areas and after the death of their father so from there we are saying that the Luo began penetrating into east africa in around 1400 what you call the 14th century that is when the Luo left what we call Bahel Gazelle or Equatorial Province in South Sudan and entered and entered Uganda from the northern part. From the northern part. So when they entered Uganda, of course, they were following the river Nile, which we call the Albert what? The Albert Nile. So they were following that river called Albert Nile. They were following the river called the Albertina Nile. So from that river called the Albert Nile, they followed it in the southern dire direction. And when they entered Uganda, they first settled at a place called Pubu. At a place called Pubu. Pubu. At a place called Pubungu. Pubungu. Present the Pakwa, Pakwachi, called Pubungu, present the Pakwachi. Anyone who knows that area, Pakwachi? Anyone from that area, Pakwachi? Pakwachi, Pakwachi? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes, teacher. You know that area called Pakwachi? Yes. Uh, there is a video there. You can first watch and then we continue. Mm -hmm. I have 
So when you look at that is when you look at this sketch map, you are seeing that this is the river what? This is the river Nile. And then this one is the river that goes to Ethiopia. This one is Ethiopia. This one is called Lake Tana. It is in Ethiopia. So we are saying that they started from Ethiopia here and first came here to look for this lake called Lake Trukana. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. This is the Lake Trukana or Lake Rudolph. Then from here, they moved here. They moved here in what we call the equatorial what? The equatorial, equatorial province. And their relatives are this one, the Shiluk or Shilak. This one, the Anyuak, the Jaa, the Dinkas. Eh? All these ones are relatives of the Luo. So from here, we are saying that the Luo came and moved southwards following this river Nile. When they followed this river Nile southwards, they first settled here. And this is the place we call, we call Pubungu Pleasant De Pakwach. It is here. I think it is where they grow a lot of sim sim and the, and the cotton. So from here, of course, we are saying that they were under the leadership of a man called Olum. Olum from, from South Sudan here, coming down here, the under leadership of Olum. His family got what we call, got what we, we call problems and divisions amongst them. The story which they told you in the primary about the, the bead, the lost bead and the spear and what? Do you know that story? Yes. Uh -huh. So from here, we are saying that because of such kind of this, such kind of problems, they started separating and Pubungu became their dispersal area where they spread into other directions. Now you find that here at Pubungu, due to such kind of problems of the lost spear and the bead, the family separated this family of Olum. It was called Olum Binonyinkanga. So when they separated, one group of Tiful and Gipul, Gipul and Tiful, they were the first to, to leave this area called Pubungu, and they moved westwards this side. When they moved westwards, they intermarried with a group of people they found there in West Nile, the west of the Nile. And they intermarried with the Sudanic Madi, the Okebo, and the Lendu. When they intermarried with them, they gave rise to a certain group of people who knows that group. Hello. The Alul people, uh -huh. Alul people from Alua, isn't it? Gipir and Tifuri's group intermarried with the people of West Nile, and then they 
they gave rise to the Alul people. Another group that had remained here at Pubungu, which we call the second group, this was led by a man known as Labongo, still a son of Olum, moved southwards, moved southwards, and settled at a place called Pawil, which is found here in the northern part of the Bunyoro Chitala Empire by that time. Pawil is also known as Chope. So the Bongo and his group, they settled there. However, we normally say that when they settled there, they are the ones that led to the in, uh, disintegration of the Bunyoro Chitara Kingdom and it collapsed and led to the rise of the Luo Bito dynasty. The Luo Bito dynasty here was due to the disintegration of the Nyoro Chitara Empire because of the coming of the, the Luo under what you call the Jobito clan. So when the Bunyoro Chitara uh, Empire collapsed, it led to the rise or the setup of what you call the Luo Bito dynasty. And this led to the rise of many dynasties or sub dynasties like the Busoga, the Buganda, remember the, the Buganda theory of Katochi Mera, who I believed to have come from, from Bunyolo, the Bukedi among what? Others. However, there are some other Luo also that had remained at Pubungu. And these other Luo that remained at Pubungu, they are the ones that moved eastwards and crossed Uganda to the western parts of Kenya. These included which part of the Luo? Who can remember those part of the Luo that went to Kenya? Yes, the Joka Jok, the Joko Wing, and the Joko Moro. They are the group of the Ruo who left Pubungu through Achori, Kabila Maido, and then moved to Western Ke Kenya. There is also another group called the Jokawini. These ones also entered Kenya under the leadership of Joka Owini Singoma. Another group also known as the Jokomoro, for them, they also moved through Bunyolo, Busoga, Budama and also settled in the Nyanza region of, of Kenya. Another mm. one, we call them the Abasuba. These were the refugees, Luo refugees from Sese Hairanzi, Uganda, Busoga, mm. and Bugwere, who also migrated to Western Kenya. And today, they are settled in the southern Nyanza province of Kenya. However, there is also another group of the Luo that went to Bunyolo, which moved northeastwards and intermarried with the Madi to give rise to the Acholi tribe which is found in the present day, Gulu. Now, after looking, uh, after looking at all that, after looking at all that, after looking at all that, let me pause this. Uh, we, you, you find that uh, Uh -huh. Let me go back to this map of ours. Uh, 
I wanted to move the, the, the whatever, then it went off. Go back to Zoom. Ah, it is off. It is on, eh? It is on. Okay. So go back. Uh -huh. So you find that uh, when you look at this sketch map of ours, which we need to draw, we are saying that, uh, are you hearing me? The Luo moved southwards and first settled at Pubungu. Yes. Then from here, there were yes. under the leadership of Olum, under the leadership of Olum. And then here, there was what we call uh, divisions, disputes amongst the family members of the spear and the bead, and then they separated. And this area we are saying Pubungo, Pleasant Park, which became their dispersal area. Tifur and Gipil moved westwards, this side, and then they intermarried with the people they found there, the Sudanic Madi, the Okebo, and the Madi, and gave rise to the present day people we call the Alul, nice looking people, and good hearted from Arua, the land of Ivirina Anite, the minister. Do you know her? Yes. Hey. So from here, we are saying that another group moved the southwards to what we call Bunyoro Chitala. And this one was led by Labo, Labongo. And we are saying that this group here led to the disintegration of the kingdom, Bunyoro Chitala, and led to the, the rise of the Luo Bito dynasty. Bito dynasty. So when they came, they first started at a place called the Pawil. So, Pawil, or you can call it Chope. Chope, or Pawil. And then you can tell us that the, another group, okay, part of these people here moved northeastwards and they intermarried with the Madi and gave rise to the Achori, gave uh, rise to the Achori tribe. Then another group that moved from here, moved eastwards, and here it was in three parts or groups. The Joko Joko, the Joko Mall, or Joko Moro, and then the Joko Win. And these are the ones we term as the Kenyan Luo the Kenyan Luo, or you can call them the Jaluo, Bajaluo. Hmm? You can call them the Bajaluo. Actually, Barack Obama is from this area. Barack Obama, the former president of America, was a Jaluo. And we have many prominent Luo, or people who come from that linguistic dialect. There are very many in the history of Uganda, the leadership. Okero, who was once a president, was from that area. We have another man called Johnny Okero, who led the independence of Zanzibar, was a Luo, and many others. So when you are doing a sketch map, you have to draw the full sketch map of East Africa. OK, there is another group of the Luo which entered into which entered into Kenya and they are called Abasuba, was the last group. Abasuba, these ones came from the refugees from Sese Islands and also from uh, Buganda and Busoga area. Buganda and Busoga area. So that is, that is what we call the course of the Luo. 
migration and settlement from where they started to where they settled. So what do you need on the sketch map? You need this place, the, this, uh, the Corrado land, which is called Bahel Gazelle. Of course, it needs a key and a compass. Our key we shall put here and say, we shall say that this one is uh, historical areas. And then this one is dire direction. Or you can call it movement. Movement of the rule. Movement of the rule. Then this one is a historical area. Historical areas here we have Bahel Gazelle. We have Bahel Gazelle. We have Pubungu. We have Pawil. Pawil or Chope. They are there historical areas that we want to see. Then the arrows, you should show the arrows. From here, I show the arrows coming. And the other names that you want to see, you want to see this first group here, known as Gipil, Gipil and Taful. And then this one is Labongo, Labongo's group. La Bongo's group, La Bongo's group, and then Gipil and Tafuru's group, and then this one Kenyan Luo, Joko Joko, or Joka Joko, Joko Winnie, and Joka Omoro, which we normally call the Kenyan Luo plus arrows, and then lastly the Abasu, the Abasuba. Uh, now, when we go back to our notes here it says that the rule left Bahel Gazelle around 15th century they moved southwards following river Nile under their leader Olum the major leader was Olum not your teacher this one is the father of Gipil and and Labong they first settled at Pubungu present day Pakwachi from there Pubungu became their dispersal area or separation area. What uh, made them to separate is that story of the bead and the what? And the spear made the sons to separate and divert and go to different areas. Now you come down and tell us who went where. The first group was for Gipir and Tifur. They moved westwards across to the Nile and went to West Nile. When they went there, what happened? They met the land there, the Okebo, and the Sudanic Madi, who were there. They intermarried with them and gave rise to the Alur people, who are presently or currently found in Nebi district. Nebi district. Is anyone from Nebi? Yes. Do you know a landing site called Panyamul or Day? No one knows. Okay, from there, we go to another group. Another group that was under Labo, Labongo. Is it Labong or Labongo? Labong. La bon, la bon, oh. Oh. la bon, la bon. Okay, la bon. He moved the southward Z and settled at Pawil or Chope in the northern parts of the Bunyoro Kingdom. Remember, we have Bunyoro Kingdom and Bunyoro Chitala. The Bunyoro Chitala was the Batwes. Bunyoro Kingdom is the present kingdom that we know that is there today. Now here, when Labongo was there, one group amongst the Labongo's group moved southwards, came into contact with the Bachwez, that is Bunyoro Chitala, and they disintegrated it and formed the Ruobito dynasty. Then from there, 
another group uh, moved northeastwards and then it intermarried with the Madi and gave rise to the Acholi, present the Guru district and Lira. Then from there, there are other groups that left Kubungu, passed through Acholi, Lango, Teso, and went to Eastern Uganda to Budama. These are the people who gave rise to the present day, the Japs, you can call them the Japadora, in a district called Toro, Tororo. We are also saying that there is a certain group of the Ruo that moved straight from Pubungu and went to Western Kenya, and these are called the Jokajok. Uh, we have the Jokomoro and the Jokowini. The Jokajok settled in what we call the Lamoji Hills in the western part of Kenya, in the western part of Nyanza province. The whole of this part here is called the Nyanza province of Kenya. The whole of this area here is called the Nyanza province. So the Joka Jok settled in the western part of the Nyanza province. The Joka Molo settled also in the uh, in the southern part of Nyanza province, and they form what you call the Kenyan Samia. Here in Uganda, we also have the, the Samia who are found in a, at the border of Uganda and Kenya. Which border, which district is that? Which district is that? Border of Uganda and Kenya, the Samia that are there. Yes. Then we are saying that the Joker win, for them they settled also in Singoma, which is Alego, still in the Nyanza province of Western Kenya. And we have the Abasuba, who were the refugees from Buganda, Busoga, Sese, Ayrandzi, also uh, settled in the Southern Nyanza province. Yes of Western Kenya, of Western Kenya. So that is what we call the, the course of the rule. After this, you say a sketch map of East Africa showing the migration and settlement of the rule, of the rule. Then after that, you go ahead and do the sketch map and show these arrows and the historical areas. Effects of the rule as our last question. The effects were both positive and negative. Where do we get the effects from what they did and how they interacted with the, the people they found? They are, for example, they intermarried with the local pe people and gave rise to new tribes such as Aluru, Acholi, Japadola. They led to formation of new kingdoms such as Buganda, Bunyolo. Remember when they disintegrated the Bunyolo Chitara kingdom, giving rise to the Rio Bito, which Rio Bito gave rise to Buganda under the, the origin or the theory of Kato Chimera that led to the formation of Buganda kingdom. The Rua introduced chief domes, such as Acholi, among others. The Rua also led to formation of the Rua Bito dynasty. The Rua also introduced petty, noms, petty names, who, uh, which are called Empako. Empa 